It is a crisp but sunny day here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. The UTEP fans have made the about four hour drive here to Albuquerque to catch their minors. And the Utah State fans hoping their team picks up their second 10 win season in school history. We welcome you to the 2014 Gildan New Mexico Bowl from University Stadium in Albuquerque. The Utah State Aggies representing the Mountain West Conference taking on the UTEP Miners out of Conference USA. So great you could join us as we kick the bowls off on this Saturday. I'm Mark Neely along with former NFL and collegiate offensive lineman David Diaz and Fonte. Down on the field, Casey Smith will check in with her shortly. David, you have a Utah State team that comes in. They've had a crazy amount of injuries this year. They're on their fourth different quarterback. And for UTEP, a program trying to win its first bowl game since 1967. Well, for Utah State, hats off to Matt Wells and the entire coaching staff to get this team to nine wins. Four starting quarterback, nine starters out for the year. They've been creative in personnel and scheme. They also knew they could rely on the number one defense in the Mount West Conference. For Sean Kugler and UTEP, he's turned this program around just his second year. From two and 10 to seven and five, he did through accountability, discipline. He also knew he wanted to establish a physical identity on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Yeah, really a remarkable turnaround for the Miners. And this is a team offensively based around that rushing attack. And is it a rushing attack that's going to have success today against the Utah State defense? Well, that's the matchup here this afternoon. And when Sean Kugler established the physical presence on both sides of the line of scrimmage, he knew he had to find a running back. And he found one in Aaron Jones. And he is a guy that can make it happen for them. He's physical. He's fast. They do it with tight ends and fullbacks. And they want, they're going to tell you, we're going to run the football right down at you. He has over 1,200 yards rushing, 11 touchdowns. And this guy has the ability to not only finish runs, but he could break it for the distance for a touchdown. And for Utah State, you got to go up against the Vigil Brothers, the number one defense in the Mountain West Conference. And these two guys know how to play the football. Zach Vigil, number 53, is the heart and soul of this football team. He plays the game with energy and passion, and I love watching him play. And he's going to be playing on Sunday someday. The best part about this is they're paired up this, both inside linebackers for the number one defense in the Mountain West Conference. Todd Orlando loves to pressure you. They attack from all angles, and those two guys are in charge of this defense. Now the Vigil brothers will try to make it a long day for the UTEP quarterback, Jameel Showers. Casey Smith, the third member of our broadcast team down on the field. And Casey, the route that Jameel Showers has taken to this game today, his last collegiate game, has been a very interesting one. Well, you're absolutely right, and UTEP is seeking their first bowl win since 1967, and head coach Sean Cooler believes that Jameel Showers is the guy to get that done. In fact, when he was recruiting Showers, he said, I believe your competitiveness will lead us to a bowl game. Jameel did take a different route. He started his collegiate career at Texas A&M, where he backed up Miami Dolphins quarterback Ryan Tannehill, as well as competed for a starting spot with Johnny Manziel, who eventually won the Heisman Trophy later on that same season. When I talked to Jamil about his decision to transfer to UTEP, he said he wanted to finish his bachelor's degree first, which he did in three and a half years at Texas A&M. And now he's also pursuing a master's degree in El Paso. I asked him about his experience at Texas A&M, and he said he grew as a quarterback. But right now, it's about getting UTEP back on the map, and he believes a bowl win will do that today, guys. Absolutely. Casey, thanks so much. We we'll look forward to checking in with you throughout the afternoon. Here at Albuquerque, not a bad day. You know that it 42 degrees, but it doesn't feel that cold, at least not to me, David. It's not bad with the sun. The wind is light, partly cloudy. Not a bad day for a bowl game here in Albuquerque. It's a perfect day for football. You could run all day as a player. The sun's out, cool, crisp air. Football season is bowl season is here. A nice day here at Albuquerque for the ninth annual Gildan New Mexico Bowl. This has been a game the last few years. It's come down to the last couple of minutes. Colorado State last year, he beat Washington State 48-45. Two years ago, Arizona came back in dramatic fashion to beat Nevada 49-48. Well, we have that type of game this year here in Albuquerque. Utah State won the toss and deferred, so they're going to kick it away. You see Utah State, they're technically the road team in this game, wearing the gray uniforms with the blue pants. UTEP, the home team in this game, they're wearing their orange uniforms with the blue trim. And Autre Golden 
six kickoff returns for touchdown. He has been an impressive player on special teams. We'll also see him at the wide receiver position today. Interesting to see Utah State defer. They want their defense on the field to set the tempo of this game. And I think UTEP would like the offense on the field. See if they establish that running game and control time of possession. Jake Thompson to kick it away with Golden back deep. Golden had a 98-yard kickoff return for touchdown November 1st against Southern Miss. And a 92-yard kickoff return for touchdown a week later at Western Kentucky. And this Gildan New Mexico Bowl is underway. It bounces past Golden and into the end zone and will be down there. So UTEP to begin from their own 25 and brings out the senior. Jameel Showers, who's from Colleen, Texas, as Casey mentioned, began his career at Texas A&M, has transferred here. So his time at UTEP has not been a long one, David, but he could really establish himself in the history of their program with a bowl win today. Yeah, be a part of this new legacy that Sean Cougar's creating here. They don't ask him to do a whole lot, and you see only 56% completion percentage. That's got to get up there, but he provides tremendous leadership and athletic ability at the position. So here's a team that's really built around their running game offensively and they come out in an empty backfield and showers in the gun swings out a screen pass Aaron Jones up ahead towards the 28 29 yard line gains about four on first now let's take a look at our impact players David with the Miners have the football and you'll see Aaron Jones they're gonna run the football they'd like him to get 30 plus carries here today and again Zach Vigil has to control the middle, and Frankie Sutera, the outstanding safety, has got to be running those alleys. He'll be the eighth guy down in the box. Vigil brothers, we will see a lot of Zach and Nick today. Aaron Jones now in the backfield. In motion comes Golden. They fake the jet sweep to him. Hand off to Jones straight ahead. He's up to the 32 gains, four more. Stopped by defensive end Jordan Nielsen. Take a look at our formula for success for the Miners. Well, the reason they've been able to turn around is their physical at the line of scrimmage. It shows right there over 20 yards game rushing. Time of possession second in the country. They've improved along that offensive line, and they don't beat themselves. The only Michigan State has a higher time of possession this year in the football bowl subdivision. Josh Bell now the back on third and three for the Miners. Golden in motion. Fake the jet sweep. Showers, dives forward, and looks like he'll have enough for the first down. Showers, not a guy they call on to run a bunch, David, but he picks up three important yards here to keep this first drive going. Well, I think that's going to be an important element, again, to have success run the football against this Utah State defense. Jamal Showers and the quarterback run game will be key this afternoon. See him look at the wristbands. The play's called in, signaled in. Josh Bell again in the backfield. We'll see Bell, Nathan Jeffrey, and Aaron Jones. Jones and Bell now in the backfield. Handed off to Jones, but he is met in the backfield by Travis Seafelt, number 70. And he may have lost a little bit there. Well, one thing Todd Orlando was sharing with this is they wanted to get bigger at the line of scrimmage. Four defensive line when it calls that, a couple bigger linebackers, because since Boise State, they knew UTEP was going to come out and try to run the ball. And you see what he does right there, block destruction and make the play in the backfield for a loss. Showers looking to throw is pressured and slings it out. It's caught by the fullback, Lufasa, who gains three. five, tacked by Nick Vigil and Brian Sweet. Well, one thing Utah State does is pressure. And that's Zach Vigil. What a great job by Jamel Showers of dealing with the pressure and getting an accurate throw in the flat for positive yardage. Now they've got a manageable third down coming up. Zach Vigil this year is Mountain West Conference Defensive Player of the Year, first team all conference as well. They converted on third and three, but now a third and four for UTEP on this, the first possession of the game in this Gildan New Mexico Bowl. Showing blitz. Running left. Jeffrey didn't get there. Stopped shy of the 45 by Frankie Sutera. There's Sutera, another one of the first-team all-conference players on defense 
for Utah State. They have four of them. You'll see Frankie Sotero. He's going to come off the edge of the defense and chase down Aaron Jones from behind. You'll see him right here coming off the edge. Again, attacking the line of scrimmage. They're going to chase you from one end and box you in on the other. Jay Maddox on the punt, averaging 42 yards a boot this year. JoJo Natson back on special teams to receive his punt at his own 15. It takes a bounce at the nine. He grabs it there, retreats, giving ground inside his own five, and he's going to be out of bounds. Run out there, tackled at about the three by Lawrence Montague. 46-yard punt and minus six on the return for Natson. Well, now for today's storyline, brought to you by K Jewelers. And, you know, the last football game of the regular season for Utah State was a tough, tough loss. They got embarrassed at Boise State. Yeah, they did, and it was at the line of scrimmage. And uh, I know that's that has not left them yet. They don't want to diminish what they did all season long, but they were dying to get back on the field to establish the physicality of the football team on both sides of the ball. Kent Myers, the fourth different starting quarterback for Utah State this year, all due to injury. And here's a run for Luan Hunt, a true freshman. He's in a little room across the five up to the six-yard line, a gain of three. He's a freshman out of Saxe High School. Well, they've done a great job. Uh, Kevin McGiven has done a great job in terms of tailoring the game plan around his skill set and his ability to manage a certain amount of volume of plays. And he's done a great job protecting the football, number one. Making his seventh start here today. Second down at seven. He keeps it. Myers can run. And he has the first down. Uses a stiff arm out of bounds at the 19. A 12-yard run. Run down there by Devin Cockrell, the safety. He had 92 yards rushing against San Jose State earlier in the season. And the quarterback zone read is a big part of their offense. And they're really concerned a little bit earlier about how many times you run with the ball. But now, bowl season's here. They've got the offseason coming up. I expect him to have a few more carries this afternoon. The motion sharp. Goes to sharp in the flat. Avoids one tackler at the 20, then wrestled down at the 25 by Wesley Miller, a pickup of six for the junior out of Palmdale, California. They really feel like Kent Myers is better when he's moved within the pocket. Rollouts, half rolls, half field reads, play action passes like that. He's been very accurate with the football. He's also got a good release. Two backs now, Joe Hill and Lawan Hunt. Utah State on second down and four. Their own 25. First possession of the game for Utah State. That's Nansen who goes in motion. Faked that way. It's a running play for the quarterback, Myers. Gain of three, tackled by Adrian James. That UTEP defense, David, they have to keep an eye on number nine, JoJo Natson, whether he's a decoy or not. Yeah, and they're going to use uh, JoJo Natson either as a weapon in this offense or to create conflict for the defense. A good example of it there. Really kind of the first time they show that quarterback counter. That's why I think the quarterback run game on both sides of the ball today will be key. Third and short for the Aggies. They converted 32% of their third downs this year. And on third and one, handed off straight ahead, battling, and it looks like with forward progress, may have it. That's Hunt on the carry. Maurice Chavis able to prevent him from getting to the 30, but he only needed to make the 29 for a first down. And with the spot, he will have a first down. Didn't get it by much. Well, that was close. And I tell you, this UTEP defense has been key to the turnaround of this football team this year. Scott Stoker, defensive corner, he is aggressive, a lot of man coverage. And watch UTEP attack the line of scrimmage right there. That's a linebacker filling attack on the line of scrimmage. They almost stopped him from converting. This drive began inside their own five for the Aggies. Handed off Hunt. Across the 20, 35-yard line, that is, there before he's tackled by Adrian James and Jimmy Musgrave. Let's take a look at our impact players with Utah State has the football. Well, JoJo Nansen, Matson, he's their X factor. He'll get the ball as a receiver, fly sweeps, everywhere around the field. And Ronald Butler, he can throw it, he can run it, he's got explosive plays. Wesley Miller, outstanding safety. He'll play the deep middle around the line of scrimmage. And Alvin Jones, the twin brother of Aaron Jones, is a linebacker that can run. Myers to throw, now flushed out and brought down. Sack back at the 32-yard line by Nick Usher, third sack of the year for the sophomore, a loss of four. 
Well, Nick Usher is a guy that gives them speed on the edge. And this is a defense that had 20 sacks in the last seven games. They've dialed up pressure, and you see him just see up and under move. That's a speed rush. And again, both ends closing on the quarterback. Empty backfield on third and seven for the Aggies. Myers comes to the near side, complete at the 37, but tackled near the marker is sharp. I'm going to spot him out just shy of the 39, a little short of the first down. Jimmy Musgrave and Wesley Miller over there on the coverage. And it's going to be fourth down. So that drive that began inside their own five, they do pick up a couple of first downs, but will punt. Jaron Bintrew, the senior out of Draper, Utah. Damian Payne back at his own 20. And that was important to flip field position for Utah State to advance the ball. Look at that rugby punt. Scooped up at the 25 by Payne. He's dropped there. I'm not sure Bertrude was faking a fake or was serious about that rugby punt, but he got it away. 37 yard punts with minus one on the return. No score with seven minutes to play in the first quarter in this 2014 Gildan New Mexico Bowl. Utah State and UTEP have traded punts. The Miners take over for their second possession from their own 26 yard line. And movement from the right guard, Chris Thomas. Before the snap. And just like that, UTEP's going to play from behind the chain. Seven, the team that five yard penalty, still first down. Has not really been hurt by penalties this year. Only 57 penalties on the year, a little over four a game. They're one of the least penalized teams in the country. That's part of the discipline that Sean Cougar is trying to instill in his football program. So now first and 15 from their 21. They stack the two receivers there at the bottom of the screen. Including Golden. Handed off Josh Bell to the 25. Stopped by Nick Vigil. Vigil, 116 tackles on the season coming in. Nick, of course, brother Zach leads the team with 145. You combine the two numbers for the Vigil brothers, David, and it's uh, pretty impressive. It's staggering is what it is. Uh, and then Nick Vigil also played running back. He's, he's just a natural athlete. And we're told there's a chance we could see Nick Vigil carry the football in those short yarded situations, possibly. Come back under center, sweep running right. And Aaron Jones tackled by Zach Vigil for just a two yard gain. They had a late adjustment on the formation, David, and went with a sweep right. Well, they're just going to shift the formation to a tight bunch with a couple of tight ends, and they're going to pin and pull. And you'll see Zach Vigil fight over the top, beat the block, and make the tackle. UTEP converted a third down on their first possession, but now a third down and 10. In motion, Golden. Showers looking to throw, but now he's pressured. Showers being chased. He throws it going deep. He's got a man out there. Caught at the 20 by Ian Hamilton. They go to their big 6'5 receiver deep, and a busted play turns into 54 yards. And you're going to see Utah State bring him pressure. They pick it up to one side, but look at B.J. Larson. He's got a chance to get home and make the sack. But the athleticism of Jamil Showers to extend the play and then find his six foot five wide receiver downfield to make the play outstanding, explosive play for UTEP. That's something they, need, they needed to get this offense going here against this Utah State defense. 24th catch of the season for Hamilton. And it's a first down UTEP. They convert on third and long with officially a 53 yard gate. Now they're at the 21 of Utah State. Handed off Jones. He stopped right about the line of scrimmage. Maybe he gets a yard. John Taylor, one of the defensive ends, coming up to apply the stick. Of course, Zach Vigil also in the vicinity. 
Now the first explosive play of the day, David, belongs to the UTEP offense. And they haven't had too many through the air. Uh, they get a lot of explosive plays through Aaron Jones and running the ball, but I tell you, it's so difficult for defense the structure of the coverage to hold up when a quarterback scrambles, especially when you got a six foot five wide receiver down the field. Bowers gives to Jones. Both one tackle, but not the second. Brought down at the 17 by Torrey Green, a three yard pickup. Third down upcoming. The UTEP offense, this UTEP team began their season here on this very field, played New Mexico back on August 30th, won the game 31-24. They like to book ended right back here. At Albuquerque with another win. Sean Kugler in his second season. And you'll see Utah State substituting, trying to match the personnel that UTEP's putting on the field. And the Aggies will use a timeout, their first. 353 left first, first quarter. UTEP driving, facing a third six when we come back to Albuquerque. The 2014 Gildan New Mexico Bowl is brought to you by Gildan. We make your favorite activewear, underwear, and socks. At Gildan, every thread counts. Buick, celebrate the holidays by experiencing the new Buick. And DirecTV, if you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. They have a balloon fest here every fall. It's a fun event. The balloons at sunrise head up into the sky We're here on this early winter utep utah state the gildan new mexico bowl here 353 left first quarter with third and six for the miners fakes the handoff out to bell bell caught at the 15 pulled down at the 14 by bryant bj hayes and it'll be fourth down so a field goal attempt coming from Jay Maddox, who does all their kicking, punting, kickoffs. 11 of 14 in field goal attempts this year. As long this year, a 47-yarder he hit against UTSA. South Morata, Las Vegas. Good job of the Utah State defense holding up and forcing UTEP to settle for three. 32-yard attempt off the right hash and sneaks it inside that right upright. So Maddox knocks down the field goal with 3.10 to play in the first quarter, and it's the Miners that score first here in this 2014 Gildan New Mexico Bowl. Monday, Andy Dalton and the Bengals look to stay in the playoff hunt against Peyton Manning and the AFC West champion Broncos. Monday at 8.15 on ESPN and watch ESPN. No other night. It's Monday night. Get down to it the last couple of weeks of the NFL regular season. Pretty good start here for the Miners, David. They get the field goal, 32 yards for Maddox, so they have the 3-0 lead here with about three minutes left in the first quarter. Yeah, both defenses holding tough here. Calvin Lee, Joe Hill back deep to receive the kick from Jay Maddox. And UTEP trying to win a bowl game for the first time since 1967. Utah State. Playing in their fourth consecutive bowl game, trying to win a bowl game for the third consecutive year. Hill from about four yards deep will take a knee. So that'll bring the Aggies offense back onto the field for just the second time today. So we are seeing that ball control offense of UTEP dictating the tempo so far. And that's a big key to their turnaround. That's part of their philosophy. Control the time of possession, run the football, Get down the red zone. You got to come away with points. Three points works there. Not what they wanted, but still gives them a three nothing lead. And again, the clock keeps ticking. Hunt and Hill in the backfield. That's Hunt in motion. Handed off. Hill running left. Hill hit at the 30 and rolls out of bounds along with the tackler Wesley Miller. A five yard pickup. Well, the UTEP defense a year ago, well, th this in general was a team that really struggled, David. They were 2-10, and 1-7 and seven in conference, but they have really picked things up defensively this year. Yeah, almost 10 more points less uh, 
per game allowed. Look at the yards. Turnover margin, plus eight. That is so key to turn that around because they attack and pressure. Much like Utah State, slightly different structure, but they believe in pressure Substitution creates and pressure. turnovers. On the offense, number 32. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Chuck Lewis, our referee. This is a Sunbelt Conference officiating crew. They do break Nick Vigil into the game. We thought we may see Vigil get some carries, but usually on short yardage. We're going to give it to him from here on second down to 10. Flag comes out down the sideline across the 35 out at the 37 yard line. Run out by Trey Brown. That's a 12 yard run. That's Nick Vigil playing both ways here today, but the flag, we'll see if it's coming back. I think Vigil's reaction will tell you that it's going to go against the Miners. Personal foul. Hands to the face on the defense, number 90. That is a 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Now against defensive tackle, Maurice Chavis, and that personal foul adds 15 yards onto that run. And it's going to put Utah State all the way up near midfield. And that's really been a point of emphasis on both sides of the line of scrimmage is blows to the head, hands to the face. They are watching that very closely this season. First down Aggies at the 48-yard line of UTEP. In motion was JoJo Nansen. Myers pump fakes that way. He takes off. And he has a big lay down the sideline. 15-10. Jumps for the pylon. line. Touchdown. 48-yard run for the quarterback, Kent Myers, his fifth rushing touchdown. Well, Adrian James, the quarterback, had a chance to bring it down, but missed him. And you'll see right here, again, it's going to be quarterback. Look, man coverage, they have trips to the wide side of the field, and it's a quarterback draw. Kent Myers, an outstanding athlete himself, takes it to the house. For six. And Natson went in motion to the far side, and it was a quick pump fake for Myers. That drew the defense looking that direction, and he runs it 48 yards. And Diaz on for the point after. And with that long run, Utah State has taken the lead with 152 to play in this first quarter. Only needed three plays. And with 75 yards in a minute 18 and the touchdown run for the quarterback, Kent Myers. Aggies looking for their second 10-win season in school history have the lead for the first time late in the first quarter. Well, the Kent Myers touchdown run. 48 yards, and the point after has made it 7-3 Utah State. And just a three-play drive. You know Myers can do that with his legs. Fifth rushing touchdown of the season, which actually leads the Aggies team. Short kick taken at the five by Autre Golden. Flag comes out. And Golden goes down at the 27-yard line. 22-yard return for Golden, but that may be coming back. Once again, our referee, Charles Lewis. During the return, holding on number 18 of the receiving team, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, First down, UTEP. Well, it's still early in this football game, but the penalty is starting to add up here for UTEP. Let's take a look at that last touchdown. Yeah, you'll see right here, Utah State trips way out here by the numbers. Anderson and guess who? JoJo Natson out wide in motion. Man-to-man -man coverage by UTEP. No one accounts for the quarterback. It's quarterback draw, and that leads to an explosive play. 48-yard touchdown run by Kent Myers. 
And once the tackle was missed at the 45, off to the races, and Myers won that race, hit the pylon. Well, after the penalty, Miners begin at their own 11-yard line. Fake the jet sweep. One and left. Aaron Jones turning the corner, 15 to the 20-yard line. Right there by Richard Stewart, quarterback, and that's a nine-yard gain on first down. And you'll see Aaron Jones again. They got fly motion. Watch Aaron Jones dip in. The offensive line pins the second level. That gives Aaron Jones a chance to get to the edge and pick up nine yards. That opening season win for UTEP here against New Mexico. Jones ran for a career high 237 yards on this field in the season opener with three TDs. Had a 73 yard touchdown run in that game. Second and two, but Jones hit in the backfield, and he's tackled for a loss. They're going to mark him back at the 17. He loses to Zach Vigil, one of the primary tacklers there for the Aggies defense. See Zach Vigil, the second team All-American, Mountain West Conference player of the year. Watch him attack the line of scrimmage, and he's come there. He gets in there to finish up the tackle. Right after Torrey Green as well. These linebackers are active. The guys up front do the dirty work so those guys can run to the football. You tap two of four so far on third down today. A third and three here. Delay and run. Showers. Falls forward and should have it. Up near the 22-yard line. Wrapped up by Brian Sweet. Second time already in this game, we've seen Showers run for a first down on third down for UTEP today. Well, it's a big part of the game plan for both these offenses to deal with the aggressive nature of both defenses. A lot of times they don't account for the quarterback in the run game. That time was Brian Sweet coming up from his safety position after he'd already picked up the first down. That takes us to the end of quarter number one. Jay Maddox got the scoring going with a 32-yard field goal for UTEP. Big 53-yard completion from Showers to Hamilton helped set up that field goal, but Myers' 48-yard touchdown run has given Utah State the lead after one.